while we do want to challenge ourselves, we don't want to set too many goals. And so how we do this is we just start by not worrying about how many goals we're setting. That's the first thing. (laughs) Don't worry about that because what will happen is if you've prayed, then God is going to help you for one uh, to figure out what's most important. But once you start to just write down your goals, and that's the next thing you want to do, you want to write down your goals. And when I start to write down my goals, rather than thinking about the thing I want to achieve or the thing I want to do, I really think about what do I want it to look like? What do I want it to feel like? What do I want to experience? Hey friends, it's Mary. And this is the Mary Jervich Show, a podcast that champions today's working women to gain the clarity, confidence, and courage to up-level your career while strengthening your faith and living your dream life all in record time. We'll cover topics like career advancement, leadership, personal development, faith, and health and wellness, so you can intentionally create a career in life full of more abundance, joy, and love. Let's get started. Hey friends, welcome in. I am so excited for today's call. We are going to be talking about goal setting. I know we have been leading up to this and it is time for us to get started. So what we're gonna do is this call is going to get us started with our goal setting And then the call coming out this upcoming Monday will be the next goal setting call. And so today what we want to focus on is actually setting our goals. And then in our next podcast episode, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to set yourself up to actually achieve the goals. So right now we're just going to work on setting the goals. And the first thing that I love to do whenever I am setting the goals, one is just consider the time frame that you want to set the goals for. And so sometimes people will set yearly goals. For me, setting shorter term goals is actually really helpful. It allows me to take on less and be more focused. So you can choose if you want to just do it for the first quarter, the second quarter, or perhaps all of 2023 as you start to set your goals. So for me, I'm setting mine for Q1 and Q2 of this upcoming year. What this is going to do is this is going to give me time. These are like, okay, six months worth of goals. This is going to make sure that I have to take action because the goals aren't too far into the future. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to give me time to be able to reflect mid-year and set new goals that might be more meaningful because something that happens in our lives is things change. We're in a different direction. God has brought in something new into our lives and Our situation is just completely different, or perhaps we're doing something that we set out in our initial goal setting, and it's just not serving us in the way that we want it to. So having that mid-year reflection is really great. And I feel like I accomplish more whenever I set my goals this way, instead of trying to take on like an entire year, because it just feels like, well, there's so much, so much time in what we could be doing. So I like to not set too short of a time frame because if it's too short, then it can feel like there's too much pressure, or I have a tendency to take on too many goals at times, which is a, is a smaller percentage of people, but some of us are too too ambitious when it comes to goals and others of us are not ambitious enough and we actually need to stretch ourselves more. So as we get started with our goal setting, the first thing I love to do is to pray. And so that is the first thing that I'll do. I'll just say a prayer, might spend some time in God's word, but really just asking God, what is it that you have for me? Please give me guidance and wisdom. Lord, I want what you have for me. I know what his plan is, is the best. And so God challenges us and he wants us to make our own plans and he is going to direct our steps. So planning is important for us to do, but at the same time, I just want to live surrendered. And so I just ask the Holy Spirit to work through me and to help me in my goal setting, like just take over the pen and take over my mind and help me to set the goals in which God has for me. And once I get done praying, the next thing I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to start to look at the categories of goals that I want to set. But before I go into that, what I want to talk to you about is something called end goals. And I will link to a YouTube video in the episode show notes 
That way you can go and watch a video. If you've never done something like end goals, then I definitely highly recommend that you do it. So what is an end goal? Well, today what we're doing is we're setting some short term, you know, whether it's Q1, Q2, or all of 2023, we're setting some short term goals. And usually these are to achieve some sort of a specific outcome. That's a lot of times how we set goals. Well, end goals really think about the future. And it's not that we can't start working towards these goals now, we can, but it really helps us to think at the end of my life, what do I hope that I would have accomplished? There's also an exercise out there that you can do to actually write your obituary. What do you want people to say about you? What do you want people to remember about you? When they are at your funeral, what do you hope people will say? Because the actions and the things that we do today affect what those things are in the future. And so when we think about who we want to be and how we want to show up in the world and how we want to contribute, we have a better sense of where our smaller short-term goals need to go. And so when you do the end goal exercise, they're going to have you set goals in three different areas. So you do experiences, you do growth goals, and you do contributions. And so experiences are things that you want to do, maybe places that you want to be or travel to, you know, but things that could be something that you want to buy or own, that's perfectly fine. Growth, those are the areas that you want to learn and develop in, really getting into the skills. What I love to do with that one is is really think about, well, why? Why am I putting this goal on here? What does this goal mean? Why is it meaningful to me? And just ensuring when I make these goals that I'm not making them because I think I need to please anybody else because I feel like this is something that's necessary, but it's really something that's meaningful to me and something that excites me and lights me up something that I want to actually do. And then our contribution. So how do we give back to the world? And this could be through, you know, community work. This could be through starting nonprofits. This could be through your actual work. But what is it? What mark do you want to leave on the world? What is your contribution going to look like? And so once you have your end goals, this really helps you think far into the future of where you're going. So once you have that, then you can select the categories in which you're going to set your goals for now. And when I set my goals and when I select my categories, one of the things that I like to do is set my categories in the order of importance. Okay, so what I used to do is I would start with my business goals. I would start with maybe a financial goal, something that felt easy to me. But what has happened over time and what God has shown me is I need to set the goals that are most important first because I need to make sure I have space and time for those goals and then the other ones can kind of fill in. And so for me, I always start you know, with my spiritual goals. So what is that spiritual goal that I have? Because my relationship with God, that's number one. That is my top priority. And then I'll go to my spouse. What are my goals for my relationship with my spouse? And you may be thinking like, well, I have a great relationship and it's not about not having a great relationship. When you are setting goals, this is all about being intentional. So although I have a thriving relationship with God, I have a consistent practice. You don't set a goal because you're lacking something. You set a goal because you want to continue to grow in that area and you want to ensure that you are being intentional in that area. And so you can set goals in areas where you're already high achieving. And so I'll set spiritual goals. I'll set goals with my spouse for a marriage. I'll set goals for my family. And from there, I move on to my health, our home my friendships, and then I will get into my business and financial goals. When I set the goals in this way, it just helps me to understand and keep the real focus of what's important. And so once I list out these categories, and you can add in other categories that are important to you. So you do not have to just stick with these categories. You can have any categories that you want. Now, a few things I want to caution you on. One, you don't want to set too many goals. If we try to go from, okay, we're not being very consistent in much, and we try to go to having, you know, 20 goals, that can be really overwhelming and we can feel like this is impossible. And so while we do want to challenge ourselves, we don't want to set 
too many goals. And so how we do this is we just start by not worrying about how many goals we're setting. That's the first thing. (laughs) Don't worry about that because what will happen is if you've prayed, then God is going to help you for one uh, to figure out what's most important. But once you start to just write down your goals, and that's the next thing you want to do, you want to write down your goals. And when I start to write down my goals, rather than thinking about the thing I want to achieve or the thing I want to do, I really think about what do I want it to look like? What do I want it to feel like? What do I want to experience? And so the first thing that I write for each category is like just a little bit of an inspirational statement. And so like for friendships, I wrote down be intentional, connect. And so that is what I'm going to be focusing on when it comes to spiritual. Some words that I wrote down are pray and grow. When it comes to family, connect, share, support. So you get the idea. So each category, you just want to go in and you want to just kind of list a few words of how you want to feel and what you want to experience within that category. Once you have that completed, the next thing to do is to go in and kind of think about, okay, what are the actions? What are the things that I could do to actually achieve this goal, to actually feel this way? If I'm going to pray more, if I'm going to grow more, what is it that I need to do in order to fulfill that goal? And we think about the actions that we're going to take. Because when it comes to goals, most oftentimes we're achieving things in life because we're taking consistent action. So that's the next thing to do. Because, right, spiritual for me, there's not, I could set a goal, okay, go to church every week. Maybe, and that's just, I'm just going to throw that out there because I think that would, that was a goal of mine at a point. It wouldn't be a goal of mine now because. I already go to church every week, so I don't need to set a goal of something I'm already doing. I'm not going to not go to church, but what could I do? Well, I could set a goal maybe of how many times I serve. If I'm not serving, maybe there's another class because one of my words was grow. And so for me, one of the things I'm going to do is to find a group class to join. So I've been parts of many different Bible studies over the years, many different groups, have the ability to teach groups. But for me, it feels like something that I can do to grow would be to get into a group class. If I'm in a group class, then this is going to give me a set time, day where I'm going to be walking through a study. I'm going to be with a group of people and that is going to help me to grow. Okay, now I come to prayer. Well, this is a different one, right? I am praying every day, but I still want to focus on this more. So how can I continue to pray more? If I just set a goal to pray more, but I don't really set any actions with it, it's not going to be likely that I'm going to pray more. It's just not going to happen. And so one of the things I could do for prayer is to actually create a habit. So our habits, our thoughts become feelings, our feelings drive our actions, and our actions are our behaviors, and our behaviors over time are our habits. And so one thing that's really important is that we actually set our environment up and our life up to achieve the goals and the outcomes that we want. And so if I'm going to pray more, then perhaps... I have a journal that I have a prayer journal and I would maybe put that prayer journal or maybe I have two prayer journals. I have one on my office desk. I have one on my nightstand or maybe have one out in the living room, but just thinking about, okay, how could I do this more things I've done in the past whenever I was working on prayer for, you know, when I first was saved, I actually had a reminder. I had an alarm in my phone that would go off and it would remind me to pray. There was a point in time when I was eating those salad in a jar and on my label, it said, pray. And, you know, mealtime is pretty consistent for prayer, but how do I pray outside of that? And so I just want to think about, okay, how am I going to pray? How am I going to stay consistent with this goal? And these are the things where you really just want to think deeper because just setting the goal itself will not achieve the goal. 
And so some things that I'm going to want to do are have reminders up around my house to help me remember to pray more. Perhaps I enlist some of my friends and or perhaps I have a reminder on my phone that says, check in with your friends on how you can pray for them. But just thinking about the actions that you can take to achieve your goal are ultimately important, but you have to automate these things. It can't be something that you have to remember because if you're having to remember all the time, then it becomes too much of a challenge. And so years ago, one of the relationship goals I actually set, and this was many years ago, and I'm so grateful for this goal, but I set a goal to call my grandmother every week. And at this point, I wasn't calling her, I mean, pretty much at all. And she's going to be a hundred in April of this year. And so I have so many wonderful memories. I'm so grateful for this goal that I set because the rewards of it are so great. But it wasn't going to be easy for me just to remember to call my grandma, even though I love her, even though I wanted to talk to her, you know, this was like something new that I was doing. And so I was putting it into my schedule. So I set a specific day and time. So Tuesday, on my way home from work, I called my grandma every single week. That was the day time that that I was going to call her because it was late enough. It was after her dinner because she's in a different time zone. So the time worked great for her. It also worked for me. And I could be consistent with this because I was in my car. I was out of work and I wasn't being interrupted. Not that she didn't want to talk to my children. She did. And oftentimes we would get them and call her back. But the key being, this is something that I could schedule in my calendar. And so we just need to be able to set that consistent habit. So as you go through, I want you to go ahead and think about if you are going to get to that goal, right? So whatever you wrote down as your words or how you want to feel or how you want this relationship to look or how you want your business or your career to be, what does that look like for you? Then you want to go through. And you want to think about what is it that I will need to do in order to feel this way and ask God for his wisdom in that. And then what we want to do is we want to just understand something because especially with, with career goals, uh, business goals, there's things that we set. You may be setting a goal to be promoted in 2023. And if you're setting that goal, congratulations. It's an awesome goal. I love it. But here's one thing we have to understand. There are goals that are fully within our control. And then there are goals that are not within our control. Now, I believe that we should set both types of goals. So you kind of have the realistic goal and the aspirational goal. A realistic goal is to pray more because there's no reason why you can't pray more. That's completely realistic. Nothing is stopping you. It doesn't take any amount of money to have that. It doesn't take, like you already have everything you need to achieve that goal. You simply need to take the actions. Your aspirational goal is something that you are not fully in control of. It's not something that you can do all by yourself. So here's what we want to do. We still want to set those goals, but we don't want all of our goals to be aspirational. All of our goals should not be dependent on other people. We are not a victim. And then when we set those goals, so if I was going to set a goal to advance in my career, what I would need to do is think about, okay, what are the things I would need to achieve in order to advance? And so, you know, you guys know I teach the My Promotion Planning System. And so one of your goals may be to create a promotion plan. It could be to read my book and then create your promotion plan. It could be to join the course. It could be to join the leadership circles. But you're taking a step towards it. You are actually preparing for that action. So one of my goals is to actually be featured on a TV show. And if I'm going to be featured on a TV show, then I'm going to have to pitch the TV show. I'm going to have to actually reach out to the TV show. I'm going to have to, another thing I want to do is be on a TEDx. I want to do a TEDx talk. Well, if I'm going to do a TEDx talk, and that's one of my goals, then I have to take the actions in alignment with that. And so instead of making the goal to be on TEDx, which is the ultimate goal, 
my smaller goals, my micro goals are going to be to research TEDx, to apply to TEDx talks, maybe talk to people that have done TEDx talks, but all of the things that are associated with it. And I will have achieved this goal if I take the actions that are associated with it. And so we want to make sure that we're taking the right actions, the best actions that we can. And sometimes you'll know those and sometimes you won't. And that's where mentors can come in. Coaches can come in and people can come in and actually help you to get towards your goal. And that may be the first thing that you need to do. If you're struggling with something, you may need to enlist somebody else to help you. Okay, ladies. Well, that's all that we have for today. I want you to take time to go and do your end goals. And then I want you to take time to set your categories. Make sure you pray, set your categories, and then start to write out what you want in each area. And then start to think about what are the specific things I'm going to do to achieve feeling, being seen, experiencing the things that you want. Start to think about that. And then when you meet me in the next episode, what we're going to talk about is how to actually set yourself up even further to achieve all of the goals that you've set for yourself. We'll see you soon. Hey friend, thank you for listening today. Be sure to join us next week for another great episode. If you receive value from today's show, I'd appreciate it if you would leave us a five-star review to help others learn about the show. And if you're ready to fast track your career and increase your income, impact, and joy, then head on over to maryjervich.com and check out the masterclass that teaches you how you can advance too. I'd love to hear from you. You can connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. This and so much more can be found in the show notes. I look forward to seeing you soon.